Okay, so we're back to doing some more work on the head here. We've got a skull that's really starting to look like uh, the shape of the head. What I'm going to do now is I have some, still have some extra clay down here. You can add some clay if you want to. So look at the profile of your maquette. Okay, so we can see it doesn't go just from his chin to his neck. There's this transitional point as his chin um, continues from his jawline to his neck there. Okay, so there's a little bit of space there. So we want to make sure that that area is not too short on our final piece here. So I'm taking my excess clay and I am bringing that back by pinching, lengthening that area. Okay, if you need to, you can add a little clay. need to get that more symmetrical. If you've got more clay on one side than the other, let's add a little. Getting more of an even look there. Fill in just a little more over here. Move that down a bit. Remember, as your clay gets leather hard, you get more control over the area. So usually when I'm adding clay, just worried about welding that on there, getting the proportions I need. I can come back and do my shaping and detailing later. Okay, so in the back here, I started to pop out more of the skull in the back just because I felt like it was looking still a little too flat back there. And I ran into the situation where the clay started to crack a little bit. If your clay gets thin as you are enlarging it, you see I'm also enlarging from the inside here. It's much better to do that than to try to add slabs of clay on top of slabs of clay because you can get air trapped that way. It can make your piece really heavy. Uh, too much excess clay um, can cause your piece to shrink at different rates. If you've got a thin area and a thick area. <clears throat> you just wanna do patching only where you need patching. And I like to just pop that out like that. Okay, so now I've got the proportions that I want there. I know I need a little extra clay on the inside, so I'm just going to take a really thin piece of clay. Just, okay, just like this piece of silly putty almost. Okay, I'm just making that real thin. Go ahead, slip that, score it. I'm gonna take that newspaper that's in your way. Okay. 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 Take my piece of clay and I'm gonna patch from the inside. So that'll give you the structure that you need, but it's not going to give you so much thickness. You need a little more. You can always add a little more. Just make sure you press it in there. <clears throat> Blend that in there. Weld it in there really well. Press from the center towards the outside edges there on the inside. Okay. That way you won't get air trapped in there. Okay. Give me a little more structure. It's looking pretty good in there. Okay. There we go. Okay, 
So I'm going to put some of that newspaper back in there. So I still have the interior structure holding the skull up while I'm manipulating it. Okay, just put it in a little bit at a time. If it doesn't all go back in, that's fine. Just want to make sure that your shape still has some integrity as you're moving it around. Looks good. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at the jaw here. Okay, so now I have a much more organic and human looking transition from the chin to the neck there. We'll worry about joining that later, but right now we have the shape that we more or less want, so I'm going to proceed from there. Okay. So in the PowerPoint presentation that I gave you guys, I showed you how artists proportion the head. In the maquette, we went over it a little bit too, as far as proportioning where the features go. So we will duplicate that here. For the purposes of doing our proportions, we're calling the bottom of the chin right here, where it starts to turn underneath here. And the hairline is going to be the top of our face. Okay, and then I like to just draw an oval just to give myself an organic looking stopping point. Okay, it's kind of like a mask. Okay, so from there we're going to start in the center. Now we're going to divide this in half. Okay. I'm at a funny angle here, so I might have to keep checking my work. Okay. There we go. Okay. It's pretty close. Get a little more down here. I'm not cutting through, I'm just lightly putting guidelines here. We can, we're going to erase these later, so you don't have to worry about them looking neat or anything. And then our eye line is going to be bisecting this vertical line here. Okay, that's a mistake. A lot of people who are not familiar with drawing the face, they make the mistake of putting the eyes really high, because human beings, we tend to... Um, <clears throat> there's kind of a hierarchy of the way we see each other and since we are visual and we look at people's eyes um, it's the first place we look at we tend to make that the focus of the face and for a lot of people they feel like the eyes are a lot higher than they really are our eyes actually sit pretty low on our skull here they're right in the center of our face okay And the older you are, the larger and more hollow your eye sockets are. So I'm not really carving out eye sockets right now. I'm just drawing in circles. These would be our eye sockets. If we were looking at a skull. Okay. There we go. There we go. And then the bottom of the nose is a line that's halfway between the bottom of the chin and this line for the eyes there. Okay, so I'm going to put another line bisecting this line. And then the line for the inside of the mouth, the opening of our mouth between our lips, that again is another half between the bottom of our nose and this bottom line on the chin here. Okay, so we'll make another line bisecting that. Okay, there we go. And the corners of our mouth end about right in the center of our eyes. That's another thing. People kind of extend the edges of the mouth out, kind of like the joker, but our mouth doesn't really open that wide. 
But again, you don't want to make it too little, like it's a little kiss, like a little Cupid's bow. It does go a little wider than the corners of our nose. Okay, so we can draw kind of exaggerated corners of the mouth here so you can get a sense of where that ends. Okay. There we go. Good. And from there, see that you can imagine the eyebrow here, kind of sketch out an invisible dotted line there. That is basically where the top of the ear is going to be. So the ear is kind of a shape like the letter C. This isn't going to be our ears, but this will sort of give us a feeling of where we're going to put them. You can see even with a few drawn in lines there, we're already starting to get some personality here. Get in a little closer. Okay. Okay, just a few of our guidelines there. We're already starting to really see a human being start to emerge here. Okay, so our next step, which I think that I will save for our demonstration during class will be to start putting in the features.